What's up you guys, welcome back to this week's Manga Sutra Manga Review and in this week's video we're going to be talking about a sending horror mystery manga called Bail Mount. Now Bail Mount is a series of straightforward short horror stories. Now the first chapter we have a young man who's driving along a road at night and he suddenly encounters this collision with something and as he gets out to check he finds a man injured on the ground and he begins to frantically call for help. But in the process of doing so, the man on the ground, who is supposedly grievously injured, is beginning to threaten him with lawsuits, threaten to bash his skull in. He's starting to shout all of these obscenities at the young man who's trying to get him help. So the young man is starting to go from frantic and scared and worried and helpful to angry. And then he begins to try to strangle the man on the ground. And then the next thing he knows, his hands are covered in blood and the man on the ground is deceased. And it starts to kick in. He has to dispose of the body. So he begins to try to dump the body off of a cliff before a stranger from the woods spots him. He tries to explain that the dude died during the collision, but the stranger in the woods knows better and he brushes it off and says that the man was dead a long time ago and that that's actually a corpse inhabited by a spirit and that evil spirits can inhabit corpses and roam around the mountainside. Now, the stranger in the woods offers the young man to take the corpse, purify it, and bury it. And as they do this, the stranger in the woods explains that there are evil spirits that roam the countryside at night. And after he does a purification ritual, he tells the young man that it's not safe for him to go yet now the young man he takes this in the wrong way and honestly i think anybody could take this in the wrong way because you know it's the middle of the night you're on a back road and there's a stranger in the woods that's helping you dump a body and they're speaking gibberish about evil spirits and corpses and all types of nonsense young man just books it he just books it for his car and when he gets to his car he discovers that he's dead he died in the collision so this whole time, he's been a ghost. And he might be doomed to run, to roam the countryside forever. Now, if that isn't enough to get you drawn into this series, Chapter 2 follows two teachers and a set of students. And the teachers are discussing what they're going to be doing for the next few months. And the younger teacher explains that he wants to teach the children about the local area and the amazingness of it, the amazingness of the buckwheat and the history and the cultural significance. And during explaining all of this, they are interrupted by some kids knocking on the window and explaining that their friend slipped into the swamp in the middle of the woods that is supposed to be in a prohibited closed off area. Now, the older teacher and the younger teacher both head to the swamp with the two boys and the older teacher has this rock and this rope and he throws it in there to test how deep the swamp is but it goes from five meters to 15 meters and the young teacher he's smart he's like there's no logical way that it is over 15 meters deep he said it's not even probably five meters deep the young teacher he's trying to explain it away as basically it's just the mud and it's just the viscosity of it that the rock has already hit the bottom and that the rope is just kind of coiling around itself at this point. But, you know, as it starts to get deeper and deeper, the teacher begins to question. And that's when the kid that supposedly fell into the mud or fell into the swamp actually reappears. And he says, I didn't fall into the swamp. Those two boys did. And the older teacher was like, well, those two boys were here. They told us to come and get you. So are you sure you saw what you saw? And the young kid was like, I saw what I saw. And the older teacher was still kind of skeptical about it. But the older teacher took the kid and the younger teacher and they all left. But it was supposedly closed off after that. The older teacher told him this is now closed off. The kid's father explained to the kid, why it's a dangerous area back then during the Edo period there used to be population control where kids were killed and dumped into that swamp and basically the young teacher being the scientific skeptic that he is he basically comes back with his own professional weight and his own nylon thread and he throws it into the swamp 
But in the process of doing so, he clumsily falls into the swamp himself, and he finds himself unable to get out, and he's calling for help. And then he starts to spot two children as well in the swamp, struggling as he is, and they're moving towards him, crying for help. And he's trying to calm them down, but what becomes two kids turns into four. What becomes four turns into six, and it becomes a dozen. And it becomes two dozen. Until he's surrounded by kids who are also drowning in the swamp who are calling for help. And they're all moving towards him. Now, the chapter ends with two kids in the prohibited area who found another bottomless swamp. And we see that it's the young teacher's corpse, but heavily decayed from the bottom up. Now, he has flesh everywhere. It seems like he's, like, relatively, you know, freshly dead. But the flesh is all gone down his arms. The flesh is all gone down his torso. Like, everything. And it makes me wonder if those kids were evil spirits and they just consumed his corpse. Or whether it was just decomposition just kicking in in that part of his body. Now, my assumption is all of those kids, their souls, their ghosts whatever the hell they were their spirits were hungry and they feasted upon his body now my also my theory as well is that the two kids that headed to the teachers and asked them to come into the swamp those were also ghosts those were also evil spirits and that the kids that fell in there they were dead they were dead by the time that kid went hiding in the bushes you know they were long dead that they came out they thought they could lure two more teachers in there as well but it's pretty dark. It's pretty dark, but I like how simple it is. It's very straightforward. The stories have a lot of variety to it. And it's almost like there is some deeper lesson to it. Just kind of respect the folklore of an area. Respect the legends. Don't try to push too much or too hard into it. Because the teacher, as he was drowning, he realized that his line and the weight had finally broke and it fell into the swamp with him and the thing was the rope had reached its limit 200 meters the swamp he fell into was over 200 meters deep and still going and it was only at that point he kind of just lost his mind at how deep it was and he knew just how fucked he was now the art style for it is relatively simplistic it's straightforward it's not generic it's not in my opinion is bad it's something like like um Kyochu Ghetto or something like that or Kyochu Reto or Osama Game or any of those other generic mangas where the art style is kind of secondary to the plot or to sex scenes or to the characters um reactions and actions in the manga and those type of mangas they really rely on like the sex appeal and more so generic plot points and archetypes to kind of push it along rather than the strength of the artwork. But with Bale Mount, it is very solid on artwork and the plots for each individual short story is solid, it's straightforward, it's not something you really have to pick your brain over, it's not something that's overly complicated. I love it. I'm going to keep reading it. I would recommend you do it too. Love you guys. Bye.